Yes, Father, I shall become a bad guy. Chapter 2. Note, starting with this chapter, succeeding on certain skill checks will earn your villain planning points. These represent your villain picking up some bit of info or strategic advantage that adds to their ability to plan for any occasion. Planning points can be spent to unlock certain, usually positive, choices in dangerous situations, helping when you might normally fail. Six months earlier. It's Friday night, and as has become depressingly more common lately, you're home alone. Mother and father are, if they're annoying, annoyingly frequent and unnecessary lurid emails are anything to go by, really getting a kick out of their second honeymoon in Tibet. Meanwhile, all of your college friends, and you use that term loosely, is this what happened to you after Toys of Robots? This is, this is the timeline where you dropped out. Yeah, I just dropped out of college. Are off enjoying a moron's idea of an exciting life. Scott is wingsuiting around South America, finding himself, which apparently involves bouncing his head repeatedly off of mountains. Lance is in New York, expanding his horizons by becoming the exact same amoral, joyless stockbroker his mother was. And Biffany what is the fuck off is somewhere. The name Biffany. <laughs> Biffany is off somewhere in Africa, saving a lot of people who probably wish there was someone around to save them from Biffany. It's all so terribly dull. Biffany is kind of name when both parents can't decide and don't know. Like one wants uh, before you know what gender to. One wants is. a girl. One wants a boy. <laughs> yeah, and you go with Biffany is a mix of both. Your your friends are Scott, Lance, and Biffany. By the way, look at that. See, I'm yeah, very you're, you're theatrical. A... I'm ingen. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of ingenuity, and I'm I'm selfish. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Exactly what I want. I love how if so if someone would try to ask if this per if you are terrifying, they would say, "I feel nothing." <laughs> like <laughs> I feel and the normal amount of daily terror. All right. You console yourself by rummaging around in the mansion's enormous walk-in refrigerator, looking for something edible amongst the piles of... Nouveau. Nouve... What? Nouveau. Nouveau rich, uh, rich junk your parents usually keep in here. Can I just say, by the way, I have a small fear of walk-in refrigerators, just because you usually can't open them from the inside. Oh, yeah. It's terrifying. Uh, caviar, foie gras. Foie gras. Foie gras. Yeah, you know, I'm sophisticated. Five different kinds of quinoa. You're pretty sure your dad learned how to be a rich dude by reading comic books. Well, I'm learning how to be a villain reading comic books, so. Eventually, you manage to assemble the makings of a half-decent grilled cheese sandwich, and after only getting lost twice, find your way out of the fridge. Sandwich assembled and cooked, and minor feelings of accomplishment relished, you ponder what to do with the rest of your night. Should I do something that improves myself? I'm going to paint the town red. I should write grandmother a letter. <laughs> That's your villain story. Grandma uh, didn't return your letter. Uh, now I'm going to feel really guilty if I don't return grandma's letter. What the fuck? <laughs> Kai, it's sitting there on the desk. Well, she wrote gonna, you a card. I'm not going to paint the town red. It's just like... <laughs> these feel like both good guy options. Uh, but maybe improve myself means something like, you know, mm -hmm. techie. Who knows? You'll read a book or knit or knit a book about reading. What? Yeah, obviously you're not going to do that. Carrying your sandwich, you walk down the hall for the full minute it takes you to get to the TV room. Stupid mansion. You plunk down in your easy chair, the only piece of furniture in the entire room that costs less than $5,000, and the only one that doesn't hurt like hell to sit in, and flip on the ostentatiously large TV. If I picked the mansion, I probably would be living with my parents. So I'm glad I did not pick this. That's probably true. <laughs> More news out of Bell City tonight where Vanguard troops are still working with local authorities to clear the mecha spider infestation out of the city sewers. Dozens are dead at the hands of the robotic menace, and while no parties have come forward, this bears all the hallmarks of an attack by the notorious Dr. Arachnus. Mindy? That's right, Biff. Arachnus, Arachnus real name and doctoral status unknown, is well known for his... He might, <laughs> well known... <laughs> he might not be qualified for that title. Is well known for his reliance on robotic minions and utter indifference to human life. 
Some stories say he drinks his victim's blood, although there's no evidence to substantiate such claims. It's unclear what the malevolent miscreant, last seen publicly on the day he assassinated President Alex Johnson in Washington, D.C. That is the most generic white guy name, by the way. Well, I mean, it's very close um, to Gabe Johnson. Hopes to gain by filling the city sewers with a mechanical eight-legged monstrosities. But we can be sure of one thing. It's probably not something nice. Biff? So are they still... Because they're not, like, instantly insulting each other. They're probably still married during this. They're probably... They got divorced less than six months ago, yeah. apparently. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. Thanks, Mandy. And may I say you're looking lovely today. Don't objectify me, Biff. It's disrespectful. Hey, lady, don't blame me. I'm just doing what the heck, what that hat couple therapist you're making must go to told me to do. Now another news. Allegations continue to come to light in the corruption scandal rocking the federal banking authority. Okay, so they're about to get divorced. Leaked documents show that more than 200 employees of the agency tasked with monitoring and regulating all major financial transactions in the country are on the payroll of the infamous international criminal syndicate known as Minotaur. It's unclear exactly how much this influence has aided the organization with its illegal activities, which include gun running, human trafficking, and murder for hire. But, con conserv er, but conservative estimates put the damage into tens of billions. Mindy? Finishing on a lighter note, dinosaurs walked to the earth for the first time in a millennia in the small town of Gro Grover's Hamlet, Iowa this week. Just, just leave it wait. there, you know? Okay, wait. No, so it's impressive that dinosaurs walked again, but a millennia? Only a thousand years? <laughs> <laughs> dinosaur holograms, that is. Or dinosaur holograms, that is. The Jurassic illusions projected from what appears to be a hidden satellite in orbit around the earth are life-size but apparently harmless. According to paleontologists, the holograms are remarkably accurate, save for one detail. A small nautilus shell hidden on each one's hide. While older residents grumble about the disruptive nature of the mysterious light show, the children of Grover's Hamlet have quite different opinion. News footage plays of children running through the streets of a small town, laughing with joy at all the prehistoric invasion. Their parents look on with more concern. Hey, Mindy, that one looks like your mother! Keep talking, Biff. It's all going in my alimony papers. As the news team continues to bicker, you take a moment to reflect on what you've seen. I hate that they always edit up the good parts of Dr. Arachnus. I bet Minotaur leaked those documents themselves. Classic. If I book a flight tonight, I could be in Iowa tomorrow. I mean, dinosaurs, man. I feel like that last one is the one me and you in real life would say. <laughs> I'm just saying. I might call my parents and be like, hey, I can get, can I get someone. Is someone projecting 3D Jurassic Park in your town really a villain? I also don't care for Minotaur or Dr. Arachnus. They're like, full murder evil? Not my thing. Okay. <laughs> you more, more into this Nautilus guy? Yeah, let's go. Try as you might, you never managed to make it to Nautilus' crime and progress. This might be your chance to watch him or her in action. Maybe get a few pointers. You are shaken from your reverie by the distinctive melody of the br of breaking glass. From the sound of it, a window on the ground floor just shattered. Probably not of its own volition. What if it was? It <laughs> just spontaneously shattered. <laughs> you grab the remote and switch the TV's input to the mansion's closed circuits camera system. The source of much of your childhood paranoia. You quickly flip through the dozens of cameras arrayed throughout the mansion until you come uh, upon an unsettling scene. Several people are standing in the mansion's downstairs den, as opposed to the upstairs den, the no, the rec room, the TV room, or your dad's office, which earns those dismissive air quotes by a nature of containing two pool tables but no computer. Most of them look like the kind of people you'd get if you searched the phone book for thugs dis disreputable. They're all big, burly, and armed. Standing at their center is an older woman who wouldn't look out for who wouldn't look out of place quietly judging people at a church social. If you ignore the ill-fitting suit covered in skulls and a heavy pistol bouncing uh, bouncing nervously between her hands, she appears to be speaking animatedly to the others. You turn up the mic on the camera. Everything that isn't nailed down. These people are stupid loaded, and I want you stupid people to load the, load the loaded stuff into the loading van, stupids. All right. She seems to think this was a very clever thing to say, given the little gun flourish she finished it with. The thugs seem unimpressed, and rightly so. 
The whole family is out of the country for their ser with their servants, off in England or some stupid thing. The place is ripe for the taking. We'll make a killing tonight, boys. Or my name is not Professor Murder. Oh, what? That's like the worst one. It's not even comical. <laughs> England? Really, it's not in... Oh, for God's sake. The Carmichaels. This idiot thinks this is the Carmichaels mansion, and now she and her idiot thugs are going to ransack your house and kill you because she can't read an address properly. Well, to hell with that. Now, I could either run for the panic room, but I'm not a coward. <laughs> make a d quick dash for the downstairs armory that one hey armory there could be a lot of things in there or stick to the shadows and do this home alone style where i look for traps to set mm -hmm. Which, what's really, the plan what's the what's I'm the really, thoughts on how to oppose doctor professor murder i'm really like coin flipping it because while the armory could have a lot of stuff i'm really it's just all guns and i'll just have to kill everyone and that's not my style so you think, hey huh? you think? go ahead go ahead yeah so then maybe just sticking to the shadows and setting traps home, home alone style, you know, might hmm. be a good idea. I, I think is, I think Professor Murder is the least intimidating villain we've seen so far. Oh, so much! E like even my character at the start was more intimidating. <laughs> even the 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 faceless Death Turtle who commented on your video is more intimidating. Death Turtle's a way better name than Professor Murder. <laughs> Oh, hell yeah. when, you, when you were a kid, there was only one movie you loved more than Batman, and that was Home Alone. Time to put all that training to use. Hell yeah, let's go! <laughs> you realize that you have one major advantage over the goons who have invaded your home. You know the layout. Even if they have a map, thanks to Professor Murder's bungling, it's not even a map of your home. You spent your entire life in this place, learning all of its hidden hidey holes, its little quirks, and the places that make it easy to keep out of the way of well-meaning but self-absorbed and irritating parents or you know murderous psychopaths a few ideas for the traps come into your mind as you reconnoiter the mansion's upstairs room however if the sound of uh, approaching ransackers is anything to go by you'll only have time to implement one okay so i can either set up wire uh trip wires on the staircases i don't think that would last too long they would... fall over and then get up <laughs> yeah i could booby trap the upstairs doors that one Depends on the booby trap. That one could be better. Or I could trap the most valuable things in each room. That one, I think, would actually buy me the most time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems more like what things do you want to trap, not what the trap is. Right. Um, again, coin flip between the doors and the valuable things. I want the valuable things to live because I'm worried about what kind of trap it is. So I'm going to go with the doors. Mm hmm. You move quickly, gathering up anything heavy you can find and placing it precariously on top of every door you can you can get to. It's a lot like the old prank where you put a bucket of water over a door, except in this case the bucket is a 30-pound iron statue of a horse given to your dad by a former president of China, and the water is possibly fatal concussion. Oh. From a hiding spot under one of the house's many staircases, you hear Professor Murder's goons make their way through the upper floor. The first one to recklessly barge through a door gets a hideous marble paperweight to the brain for his troubles. The traps catch a few more of the goons before they wise up and open doors more cautiously. Still, you've taken out some of the murders, some of murder's crew and leaned a little bit and learned a little bit about setting traps in the process. You have earned a planning point. Hell yeah. Breathing heavily, you run through the halls of your family's mansion. While you've taken out at least some of Professor Murder's crew, you know that more of them are moving through the mansion. And they almost certainly know by now that the place isn't unoccupied as they thought. And despite that, you surprise the hell out of yourselves by smiling. This situation is dangerous, terrifying, upsetting, and fun. For the first time in what seems like years, you don't feel like you're in danger of being bored to death. Stabbed, shot, maybe strangled to death, yes, but you're not bored. All of these thoughts go out of your head, though, as you round a corner and run into a stone-eyed killer with a knife and no interest in witnesses. Okay. So I, I intimidate the goon in the turning and fling, which I even know the game, I might be a little more intimidating. I'm not intimidating. I was about to say, you're probably in like your pajamas right now. There's also tackling the thug, which can't do that. He's got a knife. He's going to fucking murder me. Uh, so I'm totally going to say, oh, look at that. And then punch him in the dick. <laughs> <laughs> You pull the old, I see someone behind, wait, no, it's you, go ahead. 
I see someone behind you. So you better look and uh, look, better turn and look so I can hit you. Ruse on the knife wielding maniac. That doesn't work, so you improvise, switching to the almost as old. I pretend to not see someone coming up behind you so that you don't notice them. Correct. This also fails, which means the goon has t uh, does turn to look to see the person you're pretending to pretend to not see, and you smash a nearby vase over his head. Uh, what just happened? All according to plan. <laughs> Basically, There's, I did that thing all behind you. like, oh, I'm looking this way, and then I grab a vase and smack him. You, you, you're like, there's someone behind you. He's like, I don't believe you. There's not someone behind you. I don't believe you. Turns around. <laughs> well, it's more, it's more like there's someone behind you. I don't believe you. There's not someone behind you? Wait, does that mean... And then, and then I hit him because he's just fucking confused at that point. <laughs> so wait, is there someone behind you? Uh, you hear a loud commotion from the kitchen. Suddenly, two pairs of thick hands grab you from behind, and you find yourself marched into the brightly lit room. Damn it. In the kitchen, you see Professor Murder lounging at the kitchen table. Her ill-fitting suit looks no less ridiculous in person than did in the mansion security cameras. You're struck by how little time has passed since you were last in there, before your boring night was disrupted by this chaos. Aside from the two goons carrying you, the kitchen is empty. You feel a small thrill of pride, knowing that, if nothing else, you made this psychopath job considerably harder. She stares at you, panic hiding behind the madness in her eyes. She distractedly sweeps a frail hand through her thin, gray, unkempt hair. You notice a strange device clipped to her lapel. It looks like a camera, with a green eye staring directly at you. Before you can wonder about it, what it could be, the mad woman speaks. So, this is the stupid little sneak that's been creeping around my mansion, hurting my boy, slowing me down. Well, you know what we do to sneaky little stupid sneaks, don't you? The woman is clearly cracked, but that doesn't make her any less dangerous. If you want to get out of this alive, you're gonna, you've got to do something. So I honestly, I, I'm not gonna make a dash for the fridge, but while I'm considering using the planning points, I have two right now, so I only use one. She <laughs> sounds like the kind of person that you could get to talk about her nefarious deeds, right? I feel like they, this is they, her. I would agree. <laughs> I feel like that's true. So I'm gonna try and talk to her. Uh, try getting her to talk to my time. Who the hell are you, lady? How do you even devise such a cutting and trick, intricate plan? You've watched enough footage of rampaging supervillains to know that there are very few who can resist the urge to go on at length about how clever they are. True to form, despite her minions rolling their eyes, the professor begins to speak animatedly. Is it possible, fool, that you do not know of Professor Murder? Once the finest assistant professor of applied semantics ever employed by Metro City Community College. Until that dark, stupid day. Lo, those many years ago that the nefarious Dean Michaels revoked her tenure. You profess not to know of her turn to true dest to a true destiny, her true calling of crime and also murder. The professor begins talking with her hands rising from her seat and pacing. Certainly. Certainly you have heard... No, yeah. Oh, no, is that is me or her? her? Okay. Her. Certainly you have heard of my daring raid on the college bolster's office. You shake uh, You shake your head. The diabolical assassination of the ad adversary board of the School of Liberal Arts. Another head shaking. The professor is getting angrier and angrier, waving the gun in her hand around wildly. Her steps bring her close to where you stand. Perhaps not my ignorant ignoramus. But certainly, when the authorities find out what I've rent that I've ransacked the home of the illustrious college president Ronald Carmichael, killing whoever you are. This isn't the Carmichael house. You interject. Stealing his precisely treasures and burning the stupid place to the. Wait, what? The professor turns, shocked, instead of answering. You break free from the hand gripping you and charge the old woman. Unsurprisingly, she goes down easily. And. With a quickness you didn't know you possessed, you grab the gun, aiming it at her goons. Oh god, guns, I don't use those. <laughs> there you are, a supervillain at your mercy, a gun in your hand. Goons watching you, waiting to see what you'll do. And you know what you should do, really. You should have done it half an hour ago. Grab the cell phone out of your pocket, call the police, and be done with this. You hold murder and her boys in, in place until the cops get here, and then get back to your normal, boring life with the added excitement of talking to the insurance people about how you're going to cover all the damage. After that, you'll find a job somewhere. Maybe in the private sector. Maybe with a, a not-for-profit. You'll meet someone, fall in love, start a family. 
Get old, boring, and rich, just like your parents. Die, sur die surrounded by loved ones with nary a regret and a lifetime of memories. How does that make you feel? Having, being, you know, married, having a family, rich, dying with a loved one, surrounded by everyone I ever cared about. <laughs> ha! Couldn't be me. <laughs> uh, I resent the idea that I could ever have enough money. I mean, always having an infinite amount of money. It makes me so bored, I think I might cry. I can't let the world go on the way it is. Uh, I mean, boring. <laughs> boring. Half distracted, you look at the unfortunate professor who watches your previously hurt gun warily. What's that thing on your lapel? The camera? You say. She looks down at it. My dark space credentials. You fool, you'll never comprehend the majesty. Uh, you wave the gun and she shuts up. You turn to one of the minions and ask the question again. He responds in a little confused. Some sort of supervillain thing. Uploads footage of jobs to the internet so that those other crazies can see it. You look at the camera. It stares back at you with its green unblinking eye. And the idea occurs to you. As a small as a as small as a thought, as big as a destiny. You could take it. I could take it. You've got money. You've got ideas. Hell, if you play your cards right, you might even have the start of a crew. And you could certainly do a better job of it than the wild eyed crazy woman sitting terrified on your floor. And when the camera broadcasting into the dark space, the near mythical supervillain social network you could have even did Mark Zuckerberg make this one too? Yeah. You could you could even have more. You could have excitement, fulfillment, respect. You could be a supervillain. Reaching forward, your other hand holding the gun steadily, you pull the camera from murder's lapel and attach it to your own. The I imagine you type it to like a bathrobe you're wearing. <laughs> she whimpers angrily but says nothing. It's time to decide what to do with this has been. Well again, I'm not gonna kill her. But humiliating her on camera sounds like a good idea. I mean, also, this sounds like a hero kind of thing. What the <laughs> fuck? Like, not my, not my thing. Not a do-gooder, are you? I'm not a do-gooder. Oh, God, it's not okay. As, as the dark space watches you watches you order martyr to take off her jacket clad in a in a ratty t-shirt it's clear you now than ever this is no force of earth shattering malfeasance only a mad old woman holding the gun steady you order her to sing i'm a little peep teapot as her goons look on she tries to protest but the gun in your hand makes the request deadly clear she sings in her quivering voice she even does the little motions it would be funny if it weren't so sad <laughs> When she's finished, you gesture with the gun, telling her to get the hell out of your house. She does so, sobbing as she goes. I should get up for it. Her goons watch you warily. You smile at them, gun still in hand. Gentlemen, I believe you've all just been placed back on the criminal job market. As it happens, I'm looking to hire. You get contact information from your new soldiers. <laughs> you exchange emails and phone numbers. Yeah, it's like, okay, so obviously she was kind of like shit, but obviously I'm better. Um, so call this number. We we'll catch up. <laughs> you know, we'll meet for coffee, discuss the plans. Then send them on their way with a promise of new work soon. You take half an hour to roam the trashed mansion, wondering what your parents will think when they see it. You spend a few hours toying with the dark space camera, using its built-in firmware to log into the dark website. Unsurprisingly, your takedown of a lightweight like suit, like Professor Murder has grabbed little attention. Fair enough. It might actually work to your advantage. You don't need everyone seeing your face, after all. You get a welcome message from Obsidian Heartbreak, the site's administrator. He sends you a link that uh, that allows you to reset Murder's account information. I like how Heartbreak every... No, I just like how there's just like, well, this kid's in charge now. <laughs> Among other things, it asks you for a login name. By, tr by tradition, he explains, it's the name you'll always use as a member of the supervillain community. Not something to take lightly. The first name that springs to mind is the most villainous of all villains. Oh, that's a little wordy. Perhaps evil of evils. Or maybe something subtle like Meg. Which which only another evil genius would recognize as an acronym for most evil genius. Or you could just use something easy for the inferious to grasp, like Great One. Then there are the dramatic names. Technomancer, Battlemaster, The Spectre. These all sound like D&D classes. 
The possibilities are endless. After stressing over it enough to give yourself a headache, you finally think of the perfect name. It expresses everything you hope to do and be in this new, exciting life. You type it into the form. All right. All right. So I'm thinking I gotta go cheesy. Emperor Evil? <laughs> Emperor Nefarious? That's it. I like Emperor Nefarious. Emperor Nefarious. I'm pretty sure that's what I'm gonna go with. Uh, maybe okay, I've been okay. playing. I played a little bit too much of Ratchet and Clank. <laughs> Here, wear your inspiration on your sleeve. Look, he's a classic. Mm. Anyways, are you sure you want to be Emperor Nefarious? Remember, this will be your name for the rest of your villainous career. Oh, I'm sure. This is a fantastic name. Better than Professor Murder. It's it's a little better than Professor Murder. Once what's that's done, you take a few see? minutes to... Achievement unlocked. What? what sort of name is, M is Professor Murder? Uh, once that's done, you take a few minutes to dock to the footage of your encounter with Professor Murder. Not much, just enough to obscure your identity. Then you grab your laptop, all of your ready cash, and everything you'll need to access your trust fund. A scroll, you scroll a brief note and tape it to the fridge and vanish into the night. For this moment, your old life is over. You never really look back at the person you once were. Now, you are Emperor Nefarious. Perfect. All right, show stats. Here we go. Look at me. I'm very theatrical. This is exactly <laughs> what I wanted. For, professor, for Emperor Nefarious. Yep, Emperor Nefarious is skyrocketing. All right. Oh, God. 